Welcome back. Duval, UFC 273, also known as UFC Duval to us natives. As advertised, man, what a, was a crazy card. And, I mean, great night of event, a great night of fights, crazy event. What'd you guys think? I think it was a great card. There was a lot of uh, unanimous decisions on there, decision wins that elongated the night, so it was a very late night, but all in all, good fights. All I got to say is you see a lot of random people there that you, you don't see in a long time that you didn't know enjoy watching stuff like that. Yeah, it was um, good, good for the city. I had uh, a lot of star power out there. Got to hang, uh, actually got to sit next to a couple of fighters. That was pretty cool. Um, a lot of decisions. On what was it was a stacked card, and initially, I thought a couple of fights that were going to be fighting tonight ended up being a little bit of lackluster, and then some maybe a couple of fights that I thought would be. Uh, boring or maybe pretty decisive ended up being like complete bangers. So um, I guess we can just start like from the first fight that I saw. We, I kind of got in there a little late. We got we got in there and saw the K Hansen against Rodriguez fight. Correct, right? Right. And mm-hmm. that's when we was in the concession stands. Yeah. Right. I I didn't get to see a whole lot of that one. Um, unfortunately I got, I, by the time we got to the actual, uh, seat, it was already over and they were, you know, moving on to, it was also a decision. It's a lot of those, right? Well, we got to see one of the first finishes of the night or the first yeah. finish of the night. Oh yeah. With, uh, Vendera and Olenek. The correct veteran. Mm-hmm. Fight nine hundred and thirty-two for Olenek. Man, Olenek is like this man has. Is he gonna break the record, bro? Is he gonna like end up fighting until he's like seventy or something? Because dude ain't slowing down. And he ain't he, slowing down, and he ain't changing game plans. Nah, this man he 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 knows what to go. What he goes for is uh. Subs, chokes, Ezekiel's, and he, man grabs your neck as a wrap. Yeah, man, and you know, everyone knows his game plan. Everyone knows exactly what he's going to do. Everyone knows his strengths and weaknesses, but it's so hard to stop it. The second you go onto the ground with him, most people just panic and fall into a choke. <laughs> They can't do anything about it. It's hard work, man. Hard, hard work. Once you get into that man's Sambo game, very few people survive. Um, And we watched, okay, so we watched the uh, Mickey Gall, Mike Mallet fight. And that was the second finish of the night. And I was like, oh, this night's going to be fantastic. Right, it was so quick. I was like, okay. Oh, like, yes, um, let's keep it rolling. What do you think about Mickey Gall now? As opposed to going into, you know, because this guy, this, this, this the Mike Mallet guy, he's a Canadian, right? Yeah. Was he like. The... I'm unsure. Of he has maple syrup. <laughs> he has maple syrup? He has maple syrup, for sure. He had the I mean, the all. striking difference. Oh, wow. This guy was only 2-0 and o walking into this. Was he 2-0 and o going in or 2-0 and o coming out? Uh, Maybe coming out then. Because it's it, his updated... His, on, his little thing on UFC website says 2-0, and o, but I don't know for sure. Well, he's got color now because before he was grayed out. Right. He he wasn't unlocked yet. Yeah. 
He was the next fighter to be unlocked, He's, according to the UFC website. Correct, and boy, did he show he, up. <clears throat> he did get booed by the fans in Jacksonville. Yeah. I was part of that mob. I'm not going to lie. I was part of the USA chance. Not going to lie. Okay, so he's definitely 2-0 and um, coming out because his first fight was against um, – was in the contender series, and then this was his wow. second fight. So second pro. So they have a lot of high out. promise for him. What's up? Knocking out a veteran. Mm-hmm. Ah, would you consider Mickey Gall a veteran? He's like middle guy. Well, I mean, he's I mean, better he than is. sports. And you got to remember, he walked into the UFC also at like two and zero. No, he walked in the UFC one and zero, right? Is he one and zero or two and zero? And then he fought CM Punk. It was one and zero, and then he beat or he had like a one fight in the UFC against I don't remember who Mike Johnson or something like that. He was supposed to fight somebody, and the winner of that fought CM Punk, right? Correct. Yeah. So he he went, he fought CM Punk two and zero. So got he, talent, he's a though. veteran in the UFC. He's got talent though. It's just I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I think he's making the right move. So he made the right move to go from New Jersey. I think New Jersey, right? I think it was in New Jersey, and then he moved to Stanford MMA. So he's he's in a good camp now. I think the only problem he made with that whole fight was, boy doesn't know how to chuck, tuck his chin. He leaves that thing wide up. Like, all the way up in the air. And it got hit. Honestly, his best win to me was uh, over Sage Northcutt. And that was a long time ago. Yeah. And he got clipped in that one, too. And then he clipped him. And then something. Yeah, I think it's safe to call him a veteran, bro. I'm looking at his, like, yeah, He's been around record. the block for a little while. So, yeah. He's been, he been in the game. He at the point though where he getting pretty even on that ratio, and it's not a good spot to be even in that ratio unless you're like fighting at one forty five pounds in the women division. <laughs> that's all I gotta say about that. Yeah, it's definitely not a good look losing to somebody that's only one and zero. But we booed this man for trying to talk about. What was it? A donation for something, something, something good, a charity or of some sort, right? I think he was doing something for cancer. He he, had, he said like "fuck cancer." Yes, and he had to food this man. I I would like to say I'm sorry. <laughs> we you would like to formally apologize. I'm sorry for the maple syrup jokes. That I mean, booze. I'm sorry. I didn't know. I thought you were just trying to plug your Instagram. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hey man, when you win, you can plug whatever you want. I guess. Yeah. We looking out for some more of it, Mom. Um, Mike Mike Mal in the future, because uh, I was I was he's two and zero, oh, and this is uh, he made a statement, got a one of the very rare finishes on this UFC two seventy three card. So shout out to Mike Mallet, Mickey Gall. Yeah. Um, it's gonna be interesting to see where he goes next, but gotta give credit where credit's due. Yeah, that's not a good look for Mickey Gall. I'm looking at his record right now, and that's two fight losing streak. His next one's gonna mean a lot. Let's just go with that. Well, the next fight on the list, we all thought somebody else was gonna win, and we, we was wrong. Oh yeah, way wrong. I picked um, I picked Aspen Ladd in this one. Uh, I think we all did. On the last pay-per-view, or on the last podcast, not last pay-per-view, the last podcast, I said that I have, or that Aspen Lad should win this in all accounts, but I feel like Rocky was going to win. That's what I said on the last podcast. And it just happened to work out that way. But in my mind, Aspen Lad should have won this fight. I don't understand how she was an underdog in this fight. I'm not sure what's going on with her, man. It's... She's on a little skid, isn't she? Is that two in a row? I mean, she only has 
Well, okay, if you go, if you count her UFC career, she has three losses. If you, if you go by, I mean, she two in a row, yeah. Yeah, she Norma Dumont was her last fight. She lost that one by decision. She beat Kuniskaya. Um, before that, and then lost to Drain Drain to Enemy. She has some good names, though. Yeah. Like, there, there isn't a lot of shame in losing to Duranemy, even though that was a knockout loss. That's then she came back. She had a bad weight cut, right? One of them. She had a bad weight cut in a couple fights. And then her next loss was at 45. Because of also a bad weight cut prior to that. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's, it's kind of rough for She might need a nutritionist or something. But she doesn't look like... She doesn't look gigantic or anything. Like, like she would have a hard time making that weight cut. Compared to, like, a lot of the other people in that division. So I don't understand what her issue is. But, yeah, I mean, she might need a nutritionist. Because she's, she's got good hands. She does. She's a good striker. Which, the original opponent for this fight was Aldana. So, that would have been a straight up. Whoa, are you serious? At distance boxing match. Yeah, that was the original thing. Uh, fight. And then she had to change up camp for Rocky. Which both are going to be kind of like boxers. But one's a get in your face dirty type boxer and the other one's a clean on the outside striking type boxer she might have got slept if she fight Aldana yeah Aldana would have destroyed her if she fought like that against Aldana she would have got yeah destroyed alright alright I got one question though let's move on from this fight do you guys recall anything of this Anthony Hernandez against Josh Freemed fight God, I swear I saw it, but I can't tell you nothing about it. I remember it being like pretty wild. Like both guys were what? trading back up. Yeah. God, I don't remember nothing. And I know so I, I think, wasn't drinking like that. That's the crazy thing. I think I took this time to stand in line in a bathroom. <laughs> and that's where this fight happened. Those lines were outrageous. <laughs> the crazy thing was, was like enter and exit lines was, those were enters. Yes. So and they were outrageous, both sides. Right. All right. So I can tell like, you about uh, this Ian Gary and Darian Weeks fight. I thought Darian Weeks was part of Bone Thugs and Harmony when he walked out. <laughs> That's all I gotta say. Yeah, he could have been. He could, he could roll with them boys. Like, little lazy bone action. He had a part of braids. Like he for real looked like he's a part of bone. <clears throat> was a good fight. Ian Gary's still undefeated. Supposedly yeah. the next guy from uh Ireland at one seventy. He definitely has the hype train behind him. Is he gonna get the neck tat next? With the chest? I don't chest know. Chest tat, left arm, uh you know, he can get all that. Man, he's tall. Like six three for it's just a tall welterweight. So he's two and zero as well. Uh, but this fight to me was more about Ian Gary than it was about anything else. He had a lot of talk that he he talked coming into this fight, and in all honesty, it was kind of lackluster for all the shit he was talking. Yeah, I remember you was telling me about what you were saying. Who, who yeah. talks better than him, Chael and uh, Connor? Yeah. Chael and Connor are the only ones in his league, according to him. And you're going to say shit like that when you're going against, this could be my ignorance, someone like Darian Weeks, who's not a huge name. That's Dizzy and you Bone. already Get it straight. Dizzy Bone. And you already struggling a little bit. You better tighten up. 
You better tighten up. Well, he only has uh, – Darian is, is the opposite. He's only two. So he's on the opposite um, side of that. I mean, he's, he opened up as a pretty big dog too. Yeah. Wasn't he? Wasn't he? Didn't he end up at like, I think like plus three something like or something like that? Plus three. Two eighty. Some change. According to the site. Two eighty. So he was a uh, zero and two coming into this fight, fighting somebody that's undefeated. I think he was no no. I think he was um, zero and one. I think his only fight before that was against Brian Barberina, which was a loss. To the zero and one, so he's technically. Oh, and two now. Okay. But he's definitely, I guess, but he, he was, got, he, he was he, fed to the talent. That's what you're trying to get at. Part of a pad. Maybe. I mean, both are decision wins. Okay. So, I mean, he didn't get ran over, but definitely got lost. That fight, I remember that one. It was, um, a little, it, it was some moments when he tried to, when he kind of went for it, but that was, that was the fight that, um, looked like, more of a medium sparring match. Well, I hope this guy bounces right back and does something well with his career because he he chose a very tough career to be in. I hope he bounces mm-hmm. back. Yeah, I mean he got some potential. Being, I mean he's gonna he's gonna get some good matchups too. And in one seventy, he's heating up, man. There's a lot. There's a this is a lot of movement now. The I whole mean, definitely. division is deep. Even mm-hmm. outside the rankings, it's like deep. Mm-hmm. Yes. And to add into the pool, I mean, Ian, Ian Gary's going to be somebody to at least talk about for a little while um, while we wait and see how the dust sails on in the top of the division. But Ooh. welcome to. Somebody made a move at the top of the division. That's all I got to say. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Somebody yes, took they a did. chance at the top of the division and said, sitting on that. Like we said before, we always talked about that. We'll get into that, how fighters at the top five of this division in particular would just chill out and only try to fight somebody within their range and not below mm-hmm. them. So we'll talk about that once we get there. We're two fights away. Wait, have, uh, uh, did they update the rankings already? No. Tomorrow. That'll be like Tuesday. Tuesday. Late okay. Tuesday. I was gonna say because I see, I see, I see it as the same. It hasn't changed, but there's no update. Tuesday. Mm-mm. All right, let's talk about this uh, Pichelle against Madsen fight. The fight that was supposed to be the low key barn burner of the night that did not turn into that at all. Nah, this, I, I was way disappointed. Uh, I guess I had like um, there were moments. This, this is like twenty second moments or less of it. Like oh no. <laughs> Every time. Well, I thought it would be more, I thought it'd be more of a dog fight, and it ended up being more of like a. Um, well, I mean, I wouldn't say Vink did go for it. I give him credit; he definitely went for it. And I thought he did enough to win, personally. But I guess Mark's takedowns um, were enough to edge, edge, edge it out and get the decision. Um, we had a lot of decisions on this card, so it had it made me thinking the whole time of like. The whole open scoring concept, like what we can see, the fans as well as the fighters and the staff can see exactly how, what the judges think while the fight's going on. You can see the scorecards. Um, I think a fight like this would that would probably have been a really good idea. You know, it made, it made um, a, a difference, I think, because um, that third round, Madsen didn't want to engage anymore. He definitely wanted to just like. Take that, take it, do what they can to get the win. And I think that kind of pissed Fink off a little bit. He's a little salty. Bro, I'd be mad as hell too if I had that Magnum PI mustache. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough because, like, you get half the money if you lose. And if you think you won, it's just probably like a shit feeling to get half the paycheck um, and the loss on yeah. your record. Overall, though, I, th- I thought that was a good fight. I just it definitely didn't have the the, the fireworks that like I expected. I thought it was gonna be. I thought this fight was gonna be fight of the night, for real. Like going in, it was supposed to be low key prelim fight because we lost the uh, Jarzinho and uh, Tiberio fight. 
This fight was supposed to be on the prelims as one of those, like, oh my god, look at them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's supposed to be a barn burner on the prelims. You never know, man. I mean, you th- you think when you see the like fights and you see the matchup and you think, all right, you can guess. You can never know, man. You never know going. I mean, you, you can make an idea, but once they get in there, it, it just there's so many factors, and it just sometimes the fights that you think are going to be um, boring or they might be a snooze fest turn out to be fucking electric, and then sometimes the ones you think are going to be electric turn out to be fucking snooze fest, bro. Like it just. And not to say that this one was, it's just definitely, I guess, like the expectation was like here, and it's like it definitely didn't reach that. Hey, can we, um, can we do a little something out of the ordinary? Can we move the actual main event and talk about it briefly? Because there's yeah. not much to talk about, like the whole fight in general, like now. Well, after the Mackenzie yeah. Dern Tisha Torres segment, can we talk about that one and then talk about? I don't the real know. Main events. We'll I mean, talk about no the, the main event. Then I don't know which one you guys want to talk about after that with um, with Zombie and Volkanovski. I don't know which one you guys would rather talk about more between the Gilbert Burns and Chimaya fight or the Sterling and Yan fight. I mean, we can cover up cover them all. There's only four more fights. But I do want to um, get I want to get the main event out the way because there's not much to talk about with it. No, there's really not. You want to talk yeah. about it right now? Oh, we, we can. just get it out of the way now. We can because these we'll next three the fights, I feel we're all close. Right. Yeah. 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 We okay. So besides, uh, if you go, we will go straight to the main. Yeah. Uh, that was a that was. Alex was a really really big favorite, um, in the championship fight, and it was kind of, I think, most. Most people didn't give uh, Korean Zombie a chance. Other than the fact that he's tough, I don't know. I think the hardcores did. I mean, oh, but what uh, I couldn't like I, I, like I said before, I was rooting for him just for the sake of the fact that he's a he's a big underdog, and it'd been cool to have a big underdog pay off. But I just couldn't really see a real way he can beat Alex. Like actually, just like what is he better than Alex in, or what can he catch Alex compromise? Like what? Like just land a big shot like anybody else. Like any fight, like any fight, you, you mean no yep. small gloves. That was it. One you big have opportunity, shot. but Alex is too slick, man. I know. He's, he's too he's, he's too good. I think he's starting to uh, separate himself from the pack now. Like, um, he's getting into that all time talk when it comes to featherweights. If he keeps, you know, he is. He's back. He keeps back up these wins, and then it's not just that he's winning. It's kind of like. Who he's beating and how. Like, he looks so good against every opponent. He looked good against Max, even though, you know, obviously that that second fight could be a little controversial. He looked really good against Ortega. He looked really good um, now against uh, Korean Zombie. And I think that he doesn't have any, like, holes when you, when you look at him. I'm like, there's not much that you can just there's no weakness as you can see i think he's like a pretty complete fighter so shout out to um volkanovsky for getting it done and proving that why he proving why he is the featherweight king right now not featherweight excuse me but uh sorry featherweight king and uh good luck to max getting back up there i'm pretty sure that's the only real threat to his um staying the champion no 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 somebody Announced their uh, back in the USADA testing pool today. Some way, they actually, they are in the testing pool now. Some little guy. He was training a zombie to begin with, so he might have seen something that he feels that he could beat. You think so? Uh, as a shot at forty-five? No. I, mean, I personally Cejudo. don't, but I've I've also never been a huge believer in Cejudo. I'm not a fan Cejudo of Cejudo. Has, has proved me wrong many times. I will admit that he does have good skill, and he has proved me wrong, but I've never been a huge fan of Cejudo. 
I think 45 is going to be a little too much for him, though. If he came back at Bantamweight, I'd love to see him against Aljamain or TJ again. Like a 35 TJ, not a 25 TJ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or Ideal. even, I wouldn't mind seeing him against uh, Peter Yan. Yeah. But like, I wouldn't mind any of those fights. I think he's he's coming back. He's getting back into the pool just to fight at 145. It makes sense. It's the only fight that'll make him a lot of money. I feel he could take down Max Holloway and hold him down enough. It pains me to say that, but I feel like his wrestling is good enough to do that, to maybe get him a title shot. Like that's how I feel. Hopefully, yeah. Max knocks him out, puts him away, call it a day, go back to retirement. But his wrestling is so good, and you can't really deny that. And the UFC's rules, they cater towards wrestling tremendously. So, he might be able to do that if they end up matching up him with Max instead of just giving him an immediate title shot. It could happen. But I would rather see Max against Volkanovski. And you know how yes. much I like Max. Can yeah, I don't, I, I, don't, I don't think that Cebudo has a... I, I would take Alexander in that. And I know like a lot of times we we look at like recency bias like we we think about what the fighter just did and then we factor that into like what's going to happen the next time they fight pretty heavily so like right now we just witnessed Alex basically just smash Korean Zombie just be real he, he fucked him up had a doc, had a uh, referee stoppage in the beginning of the fifth Herb no this is the fourth, fourth. Herb it was a, it was that fourth. was the best stoppage mm-hmm. ever by Herb it was a good stoppage like Wait. I it was a standing TKO, but in in the fourth or was it the fifth? Fourth, the fourth, fourth. Okay, okay, okay. I thought it was the fifth. My bad, my bad. <laughs> no, we didn't have um, to stay five minutes longer. No, nah. we had the game play like, hey, as soon as this fight, so we out. <laughs> <laughs> we out, out. Look, get ready. Okay, get your belongings together. Um, but no, I, I just, one Sugudo's been gone for a minute. Is he even? I mean, it's not been that long. It's only been what? Yeah, but it's two years. It's two years. It's two years. He, he is training though, because he's training all these fighters, and he's actually physical in the training department with them. So I won't say that he's out of shape. I don't think that he expected to be out this long. I think he tried to do a power play to get paid more money, and it just failed on him. Mm-hmm. Like in all honesty, <clears throat> I agree. Yeah, he is I training think... with like one of the best ever. Yes. That's like 20 weight classes above him. Correct. And it's like it, the old school John Dotson versus Arlovsky, but yeah. But so do you think this is uh, a goodbye for, goodbye for uh, Chan Sung Jung? Sun is, Kim's is cousin? Uh, nah. No. No. Nah. 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 Hey, yo, I should call up Sun Kim and ask him if they went to go get a uh, Korean barbecue the other day. <laughs> him and his cousin. I should ask him. I'm going to call him up and ask him. I'm like, where was the invite? Yesterday. If he didn't get it before, he damn sure ain't get it after because his, his mouth's going to be fucking... He ain't chewing nothing solid for weeks. That man got... That was that was rough. Uh, recover soon, my bro. Recover soon. No, nah, he's not done. Soon. He's not done. He's still got plenty of great fights to be had at 145. Yeah, Zombie's I, I, exactly the same as he uh, he's ever been. Like, yeah, he didn't win the title. Okay. But he's still one of the most exciting fighters in in the UFC period, and he's going to have all kinds of matchups that he's just going to be exciting in, and people are going to want to see. I got one. Yeah. He's I, not a Korean cowboy yet. He's not a Korean cowboy yet, huh? He's he's definitely Korean Nate Diaz. <laughs> you think he's gangster enough for that? I mean, fighting wise, he is the way the way his fighting style is for sure. I don't know his personality. It doesn't show like much in his uh, personal life, but shit, like the way he, the way he chooses to get down, that's it's pretty gangster. Like it, one thing about um, I I, I I did ask I did ask the question: Would he do you think this is the end for him? Um, mainly because he took so much time off, like when he was doing the military service, he had like what three years off. Yeah, three years. It was two years and then the comeback story. So yeah, mm-hmm. I thought they just took a, such a big chunk out of like his professional career. 
I don't know. And then who's the, who, who, who knows? Like in this sport, all it takes is uh, as when you have a name like he does, it's win like three or four fights in a row. Can you string together three or four fights, three or four wins, and then you can be staring back at the title. And while it's not like all about the title, uh, as long as he's willing to put on a good show, they'll still, I'm, I know they'll book him. And like I said about any fighter, the game will get rid of you. When, yeah. when 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 it's ready, I was just curious because I know you guys. Are, I know you especially um, pretty big fans. So, would you? Th- what do you think as a fan of his? As a fan of his, I put him slightly above where I feel like Frankie Edgar was about two years ago. Where I love the guy; he's still competitive at the top of the division. Will do I ever think that they're going to be champion again? No. I don't think they're going to be champion, but I never did in the first place. And the excitement's just there. I think he's got a lot of good fights that he can make decent money off of and continue his career if he wants it. I know for a lot of the Asian fighters, it's a little difficult uh, for them. It's harder for them to get fights lined up, and they seem to struggle to do one fight a year if they can. So... Yes, as if he wants to do that. That that is tough because like, it's hard to get. Mul- it's hard to get multiple fights in a year if you can't get the logistics right. So, right. Yeah, I mean, I got a match wait, for him. Agreed. Who's that? What you got? What you got? Barbosa against Zombie. I like it. I don't hate it. I like it. Um. Barbosa needs to win desperately. Um, and I think it'll be an entertaining fight between him and Korean Zombie. Korean Zombie is just like, uh, it's so, it's, he does shine in some moments where you don't think he will. He, like, it's, like I, I think that, that Nick Diaz comparison is because he just bleeds so much, he takes up so much damage, and he just keeps coming. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I, I think, uh, Versus Barbosa specifically, that that could be a fight where KZ can get a win. Barbosa keeps going forward too. Mm-hmm. That's true. Both are primarily strikers, so you, you expect that you'll get a really good kickboxing match. But then both guys are coming off um, losses and um, are going to want to get a win. So who knows what that they can do? They will, they will try to impl- like implement. Like you might see. Um, Barbosa, you know, come out and turn into a wrestler for, you know, the beginning of the fight. Just, zombie, though. Well, I mean, just to show a different look because he's been every, his last few fights has been, um, you know, pretty brutal for him. Not like quite getting the result he's looking for. And Barbosa is super entertaining. Exactly. That's why I mm-hmm. figured that's a good matchup. Just. As a fan perspective, because you know neither one of those two guys are fighting for a title, unless nah. the whole rankings is sick or hurt. I mean, yeah. it's, like I said, it's, it just it all it, it does take. I don't see it. No, but can it happen? Is it is it impossible? Also, no, no. no. I mean, like if they, if they both string together, like like it's 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 easy. Like I said earlier, it's easy to look at what we just saw and then think that that's how they're going to be forever. But, you know, six months later, if this guy, if, as long as they, they're still dedicated and as long as they still have the, the drive to want to be better, who knows what he's going to look like in six months? I mean, do, who knows do you what think the they going to look like? Do you think they try to feed him namesake wise to an Arnold Allen or a Giga? Mm, that's, that was more, um, that makes sense Zombie? too. Yeah, like, do you think they feed him, or do you think they just go for the entertaining fight? Wait, wait, uh, who's uh, Calvin Cater got lined up next? Isn't he fighting Northern Uh, Island next? Or is that, that's not official? I don't know if that's official. I could see them trying, well, no, Giga just lost to Calvin Cater. So, Mm -hmm. hmm, I don't know. Uh, they, they usually try to have the guys that are both ascending fight each other. 
Yeah, it, it, I wouldn't so be surprised. He might fight Josh Emmett. He might have a Josh Emmett fight, or they might even they might even put him up against Bryce Mitchell because he just beat Barbosa. Hmm. I mean, that's fair. I don't find that one as entertaining. No, actually, I, well, I not find to it the good. to the main fans. I, I, I find, find it, it good, good, but to like the casual match. fans, I don't think that it like grips. It'll you show know what you I mean? How good Zombies Jujitsu actually is, or Bryce Mitchell's Twister jiu-jitsu. versus Twister. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it's, mm-hmm. Bryce Mitchell showed he could stand and bang, so it's it's pretty yeah. interesting. I was just trying to give Sun Kim a shout out because that's his boys. <laughs> Zion All right, so Barbosa. split decision for Tisha Torres over Mackenzie Dern. That is another one where I'm like, man, we need that open scoring for sure. I fight. thought it, it was. It was a. It was a good fight. It was good. Um, I thought Mackenzie looked a lot. She looked a lot more. Um, Aggressive, like she was throwing some good, some big shots, and I mean, she wasn't able to get Tisha down and keep her down. Um, like, like she wanted, would have wanted to, but man, that that sequence when Tisha was when she was on Tisha's back and she was just holding her up, like she was standing in the corner. I thought her legs were gonna give out, but Tiny Tornado he held on, man, and like made it interesting. She got the split decision, so. Um, shout out to Tisha Torres. And um, boy, Raquel was going ham in that corner. No, you know yeah. who was going ham was uh, Mackenzie Dern's baby daddy, husband. I'm not sure. He had the baby in his arms and his hair on full display. He was hype. <laughs> that was the hypest dude in the whole building. Oh, yeah. He, he, he was he, he was about it. He put on for Mackenzie for show. She tried to take Did away uh, Tisha Torres' arm, though. Yes, she and, did. Uh, yes, she, she did. Tried to get that shit home. Tisha survived a lot of uh, threats there. Probably she saw, she saw some toughness. Yeah, saw some real toughness. She survived a lot of toughness. Had the advantage on the striking, I would say. But I will say that Mackenzie Duran's striking has improved a lot. I didn't know Perillo was in her corner. And if you need to... Uh, get some better striking. Perillo is a good person to have. So, I'm happy with that. Is the uh, Hamza Chimaev train slowing down, or um, did is, is, Gil- is Gilbert just that good? Are we going here now? I'm going now. If you ask me, the conductor of the uh, Hamza train, he's still on um, full blast, but me. I I got dropped off down in uh, downtown the other day, so I'm good now. Right. He's a contender for sure. He proved that. Yes. Gilbert Burns proved he is also worthy of being in his spot, even though I feel like he's just going to move down one. Yeah, he's only going to number three. Yeah. Like, if he moves down at all, he's only going to number three. That was a fight. That was that was a fight. The surprise. That was that was the surprise fight of the night, in my opinion. I think I think the consensus was this fight was going to be pretty one sided either way. Like most people who were on the like Hamzat like bandwagon thought he would just steamroll Gilbert Burns, and the the betting line showed that. Yeah. Like betting line was all was heavy Hamzat. What is he like minus five hundred or something like that? Almost four ninety. Mm-hmm. Gilbert so, plus 360? Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Man, the number two dude? Like, are you serious? Yeah. But that's, that's, that's the thing, man. Like, I don't think many people saw Gilbert um, doing anything with Shemaev. And then the ones that did, um, they also thought that he would just expose Shemaev, maybe crack him with a hard shot, put him out. He did. Um, which he, he, did he, 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 he cracked didn't put him out. He didn't put him out. Definitely did crack him. Uh, several times that that fight, I think that uh, this was a like we go back to the whole open scoring thing. I think this was a fight where if um, they showed why, like they they had their work to show, like how did Hamza win? It, I would I would be interested to see because 
Uh-huh. I thought Gil did enough. Yeah, I thought that. I thought I thought Gil definitely did enough to get the win. It depends how they scored the second round because definitely Gilbert won the second round, mm-hmm. like by far. This fight could have been a draw in my books. That's all I gotta say. It was close to being a draw. Uh, like I had, if if I was a judge, it's ten eight second round Gilbert. That's my opinion, and this mm-hmm. fight ended at his draw. Hamza out one one and three. You know, just enough to win one and three. And Gilbert, he got second round for sure. Like, without a shadow of a doubt. Like, he he, he was beating the brakes off Hamza. Like, this man bleeds. He's not a machine. You know what I'm saying? It ain't like the Rocky Four Russian dude where he's a machine. You know what I'm saying? I'm like yeah. in the corner of Rocky telling me, he's a, he is a man. He bleeds. <laughs> you know what I mean? He bleeds. Like that that would be me right now. Even though I was on the hype train, but it stopped in Duval. And I, I got off, got my ticket stamped and everything. I'm home now. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> yeah. I wasn't on the hype train. I was on the he needs to prove something. I thought Gilbert was gonna steamroll this. So actually Shemayev got a lot of respect for me in this fight. When I walked out of the arena that night, I thought Gilbert did enough. To win that fight. And I thought same thing. He won one and two. I thought he won one and two. And then third was leaning towards Chimaev. But that being said. When I watched it as a review. I rewatched it. And I would say it's pretty clear that Chimaev won. One and three. And he did come out with that victory. So, yeah, I think it was a good humbling situation where, you know, Chimaev has to go from thinking that he's going to steamroll everyone in this division to an eye-opening like, hey, I almost lost that. I almost got knocked the fuck out. Because he almost did. He had weak knees more than once in that in that fight. So. Mm-hmm. He was doing the cabbage patch and shit? Oh, Yeah. I yeah, mean, but Gil- then again, he also knocked down Gilbert Burns mm-hmm. hard in the first round. He he fucking knocked him on his ass. So it was a good back and forth barn burner of a fight. And yeah, Chimaev got more respect from me. Do I think he's a world beater like he, he wants to say in two divisions? No, I question him more at 85 now. But I think he's a good competitor at 170. We'll get to that 185 talk after. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. I, I I follow. Um, I mimic what you're saying as far as my opinion. Uh, going in, I thought I thought Gil had a legit shot to to get the win and um, even finish. I thought it would be with jujitsu after maybe um, hurting Hamza. We just never saw him in any trouble. And now we can come away. Now as a fan, I come away from that fight thinking, well, knowing now that he can get into a war and be okay. Because he was still there in the third round and, you know what I mean, still competing. He did look to slow down a lot. Um, and that was obvious that Gil had him hurt a couple of times. So who who knows? Like, I guess we're going to find out because he's going to get booked versus Colby, according to all the all the talk. That's, that's the, should be the next fight. So who knows? I, I, if, if it's a main event fight and it's three, it's five rounds. I'm very in, interested, interested to see um, how does he look over the course of five rounds. That's why I want to say. That's the only question I have left on him because I, I see that he can crack. His striking's not nearly as bad as I originally thought it was because I thought he was more of a wild man before, not not very technical. But he showed it's better than I thought it was. Obviously, he has his wrestling skills. Obviously, he has heart and a chin because he survived this match. Now, Mm -hmm. the only thing that I have left is because, like you said, he did slow down in that third round. Not knocking him, though, because getting hit that hard that many times in that exhausting of a fight, anybody would. But will he last five rounds? According Mm -hmm. to the conductor of the hype train, they told me that he... Went back to the game plan, supposedly, in the third round. 
Like he listened to his coach instead of giving the people the fight. How true that is, I don't know. But it could just be the beard that's giving the extra padding for his chin. So we don't know. <laughs> Always. We don't know. With him and Kobe, he's going to have to have a gas tank. That's all I got to say. Yes, he has to worry less about his chin and more about his gas tank. And he can't just wrestle Kobe. There ain't no wrestling. It ain't, just, it ain't just wrestle. Wrestle, smash. Nah, nah. Kobe could wrestle. Hey, you know what's crazy? I didn't know this dude was a blue belt prior to going into this fight. He's no longer a blue belt, though. I know. He got his purple belt in this fight, but <laughs> I didn't know that. I had no clue. I had no clue. Wow. It's impressive that um, he even was... He did engage in a lot of grappling with Gil, but Gil did a good. Gil, Gil did a very good job of fighting off takedowns and um, winning the grappling situations. I think like, when damn. he stopped that first takedown, it changed everything. Oh yeah, His, and that the damage he did from the bottom. Gil was like super aggressive from the bottom. Yo, what round like, was let, it where he kicked him off of him? I think that was round two. Yo, yeah, I think that was I the just, second. Like, Say, so get the fuck off. Get off. Mm -hmm. Get off. Yeah, that was that was that was that was the fight of the night to me, and um, I don't think there really was a loser, even though um, on the on the stat sheet it does somebody has to get the, the the L, and it's gonna go to Gil. I don't think he was a loser at all. He definitely showed the heart of a warrior, fought his ass off, and I think he got a bonus still. Oh, it's, uh, it's, night, it's, sure. Well, I think he also got the um, paid his win bonus. He yeah, he got it. his win bonus also. He deserves it. Dana White paid him his win bonus. He yeah, that's that's it. awesome. I mean, you, you know, you know how I feel about that. I think they should get paid. Um, they should get a win bonus. It should be the same. It should be a flat thing, not win or lose. But especially like for um, like guys like uh, not especially for because I think all of them deserve to get paid a flat rate um, just for getting in the cage. But. Um, and especially in fights when it's a toss up, like it's it's very very close. The other guy shouldn't be getting double just because you know the judges said so. Yeah, but well, I mean, Gilbert Burns came in there as looking at like a he was getting sacrificed, and he said otherwise. Mm -hmm. Speaking of sacrifices, um, most most fans, especially most um. Most casuals thought this was going to be just another walk in the park for um, Aljamain Sterling, Peter Jan. I guess most thought that Peter was just going to like execute Sterling. Um, he did put on the Jaguar helmet, <laughs> which he is did. already a losing sign. He, he said, and he's no, I'm going to win. This Jaguar helmet helped me win. Well, Sterling was very, very uh, emotional at the weigh-ins, too. I think that some people would think, take that as weakness, like he was afraid or something like that. But I think just all the sacrifices it took to get back, um, healing from a neck surgery, and plus all the back and forth with the DQ loss and how, he, how the fans um, were giving him shit. So it's a lot. And watching the fight, look – I thought for sure the first round was probably the closest round out of all of them, out of all the fi all of all five. And I gave the edge to, to Aljamain in the first one, but not by much. It was just it just it wasn't like either guy did a whole lot, but Jan was much more aggressive than he normally is. Yeah, we was talking about that during the fights. We were talking mm -hmm. about that as the fight was happening. Like, hey, mm -hmm. he came out. He didn't download this round. He just straight up came out. Walking True. Forward. And he was he's he was throwing and at um Aljamain pretty aggressively, but he was swinging and missing. So Aljamain, Aljamain did a good job of, um with, with being elusive and being a hard target to hit. The next two rounds though, yeah. I thought would obviously I mean next two rounds were obviously very dominant and if you're how you counting these rounds is like interesting because my my thought about it is 
Aljamain had Pewter in fight ending sequences or position for 10 minutes. For third, second and third round, he was at threat of getting choked pretty much the whole thing. He was backpacked for most of it. But you got to give Pewter credit for not getting uh, sub, for fighting him off as well. Yeah. So that's why I, it's gonna be it's hard to label those ten eight rounds, even though it was absolute domination. And then the, the, I and then the, slightly disagree. You you would still I call think, those 10, 8, 10, 8 rounds. Round two, I would call or have a good. I think there's a good argument for that to be a ten eight round. Round three, not as much because I think he only had like half the round on his back. Round three, he did a lot better defending the first couple of takedowns and hand fighting. He, he got better positions. Jan got better positions in round two than he did in round, or I'm sorry, in round three than he did in round two. Round two, Aljo put that figure four lock on and stayed at it the whole round, like almost the entire round. I think it was like four minutes of that round. Or nothing but Aljo on at, in backpack mode, so I think that's complete dominance in his situation, where all Yon could do is hold on to wrist control, and that's it. So I think that one could have an argument of ten eight. It was not scored as a ten eight, but it could have been a ten eight round. And yeah, the first round was definitely the closest, and the the other ones I think were pretty obvious. Round three, four, and five, I think, are pretty obvious which ones they went to. Mm-hmm. It was all about who who you gave that first round to. I thought Jan looked much improved in uh, in the in the fourth and fifth, which is like that's kind of his thing. Like once he, that's you know, usually it's like the first round he's just like slow, methodical, but then pours it on as the fight um, goes on down round by round. Down. Yeah, and he looked he looked good, but. I don't think he was as dominant as like he he, didn't, he never really had Sterling in the fight ending sequence. He definitely didn't look like how he did in the first fight. That's for sure. No, but I think all that was a testament to how well how loose Sterling was in, the, in his game plan. They did a good job um, with mixing in the striking effectively with um, heavy grappling and heavy shots. He was at those times he was just like purely diving for Peter, Peter's knees and. I was like, damn, that's kind of hey, dangerous, man. How many times were y'all thinking, like, oh, man, please don't knee him in the head again. Please don't knee him in the head again. You know what I'm talking Enough, about? Nah. Every position that it was, like, almost like, please don't do it. Please don't do it. Please don't do it again. Please don't he do it again. The crowd was screaming for it. I know. Every time he was in, like, a, a down position, everyone was like, knee! Knee! But he would take his back and, you know, do his thing from there. But it was just like, please don't knee this guy in the head again. Please don't. <laughs> No. What's next for the crowd? The crowd was crazy though. Our section? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yo. The foreigners behind us. They had they were oh, foreign, yeah. right? They were foreign? Oh yeah. yeah. They had heavy accents. Yo. They were nuts. I don't even know what they were saying anymore. They I don't, they they were cheering for one guy and then they started cheering for the other guy. I'm like, whose side are you on? Who are you going for? They're just fight fans. Yeah. Like, yeah. Kick his ass. Mm-hmm. Kick his ass. I'm like, is that the same now, guy? The guy, the guy, the guy directly behind us. I think he. I know for sure he was pulling for Pure Jan in that fight. I think he had bets, uh, and he and he definitely had Korean Zombie in the main. Yeah. Ouch. But yeah, they were they were fun. They, they made it. They made it really entertaining. I was like, oh yeah. There was a going. couple entertaining people around us. <laughs> Yo, uh, let's go, Brandon. Dude was hype. That's yeah, let's go, say. Brandon was super hype. Yo, he was, hype he was, no, he was hyping mad for no reason. He was mad for right. nobody. He was looking around <laughs> hoping somebody would say so. I'm like, like what? Yo, yo, B, yo, B. <laughs> That's what I felt like saying. He, he had. And then we got the course. early twenty guys that were right behind me that couldn't hold their beer. Went too hard too early. Had to leave early on. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, homie was tanked. All right, so uh, Al Jermaine's obviously going to fight TJ. Should be that was a call out. Fight fight. To make. Peter Young, was- though, I don't know where he goes. I don't, I don't know. 
that division is it's it's loaded. It's definitely loaded. He could possibly fight the winner of the Rob Font Marlon Vera fight. Have they fought before any of those? I don't think so. Cause he, he beat Aldo. He beat San Hagen. Or me Rob. Me Rob. I was gonna say that he might get a, a um a matchup with Aljamain's teammate. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. That's that's his homie. Wasn't he in the cage with him? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, he won't Ginger. Know him. I don't know. Peter Yan is like I don't see him not coming back up to fight for the title. I really don't see it. I I mean, I don't see him not coming up to fight up for the title again. I mean, he can pretty much, it's a new fight, number five, all the way down to, actually, everyone's new for him pretty much, except for the top five, or top three. Because he beat San Hagen, but Rob Font down, he hasn't fought yet. Yeah, that's true. He, so yeah, he's, he's got all the options. He already has wins over number three and number four in Jose Aldo and, and San Hagen. Mm-hmm. I would love to see him um, versus Dillashaw, but um, like you said, pretty sure but Peter Jan's not getting to TJ Dillashaw. TJ's going to probably get that title shot versus Al- Aljamain. Um, Rob fight would, would be interesting. Rob fight, fight would be interesting, but I think um, Davish Davish Wally would be even more interesting. Story wise, that would be even more. Yeah, better. Even even Song Yudong, but I'm not sure he will go that low. But you never know. Yeah, we just I don't think he's gonna go that low. Well, you never know because like look at oh, number eleven fought number two. Because of that congestion in welterweight division, we had Gilbert Burns taking on Hamza Chimaev. At a, Chimaev was ranked at eleven, even though he had a, he had a fuckload of hype at eleven. And um, I mean, Yadong has has a good amount of hype too, but it might be a little bit more difficult for him, given that he's is he's, isn't he um Chinese? Is he fighting out of China? Yes, yes. It's it's a little bit harder for him to get him, um consistent like matchups like right now. Yeah, I mean he can. That would be. I, I'm curious about that. I would like. I would love to see that fight. I wish. I mean, I be. wouldn't mind seeing the Dominic Cruz fight, but I really want the Dominic Cruz Sean O'Malley fight to become a thing. Oh yeah, I, I'll definitely. That, that's. I would, I would love that. I would love to see Dominic O'Malley. So that's the only reason why I'm not mentioning Dominic Cruz's name in that situation, even though he's definitely a. A good option. Yeah, man. I, I will say this though, kind of like um, I I thought Alderman definitely did enough to get the um the split. I know um some people would get the victory. I know um there's a lot of one person in particular wasn't too happy about it. Dana White didn't look pleased. When he saw the scores announced, um, yeah, y- you know, I-, I laughed at the whole fight ending sequence because you could see that Dana White was standing behind Yon and ready to put the belt around Yon, and then when they announced that he was going or it was Aljo, he was like, "All right, I guess I got to go over here." <laughs> Dude, I'm just happy we got a uh, United States champion. You United States male champion? Male champion, yeah. Male champion. I'm just happy we have one finally. Yeah. Officially. Not no <laughs> controversy or nothing. He won fair and square. That's all well, we're happy yeah. about. All right. People just need to respect Aljo, though, because whether they like it or not, Aljo didn't do anything different or spectacular that wasn't outside of his wheelhouse anyways. That is how Aljo fights. Aljo fought like Aljo and won that fight. Yeah, it was a split decision, but still. Hey, you remember that one time a long time ago, he had somebody in the backpack and his legs gassed. What was that dude's name? Misha Tate's old, uh, old, uh, 
dude. He should have won that fight. He should have won that fight, but man, he put too much strength into his legs to hold that uh, body triangle the way he did. Caraway, mm-hmm. Callaway, Caraway, 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 yeah, Caraway. Yeah, that's that's an L on Aljamain's record that he shouldn't have. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, was that the fish hooking fight too? Hey. No, who did he fish hook? I don't remember who he fish hooked. I remember oh, well, that guy is out of everyone's mind. We were so salty afterwards. I remember watching that fight. That's when he had, right. the, uh, he had the flat top like Rakim with the part and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and Caraway was on the rise with these shady victories. Yeah. <clears throat> to no longer be here. I hope, um, I'm pretty sure the UFC Jax did really well. Um, I hope it did uh, well enough for them to bring another event. I imagine that it sold out, so I imagine they're going to come back again next April. So if they keep coming back every April, I'm good. April, May, mm-hmm. whatever they want to choose, every time. Keep coming I like back. it. They said they did record numbers again, so. Come on back. Come on. Come when, on back. Well, we met so many random people just from being in spots. That weren't even from mm. Jacksonville to begin with. Where was the people uh, to the left of us at the one place we was at? The, the little bar we was at? You guys remember? Oh, those Key, ones Key, to Brian? Key West. Yeah. They were from Key West. Okay, that's that's Florida. Where yeah. were the uh, the Volkanovskis? The ones from the right, right the Volkanovskis, well, they were from Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania? They came yeah. all the way down here just to see some little Australian dude. Bro, they they made a trip out of it. Like uh, apparently they have friends in Fort Lauderdale, okay. so they flew all the way down to Fort Lauderdale, drove up from Fort Lauderdale for the fights, and they're driving back down to Fort Lauderdale. That's not a to fly task. out. That that's a drive. That's not an easy task. It ain't be like, hey man, I'm gonna come hang out with you in Fort Lauderdale. Then I'm gonna go drive up to Jacksonville real quick. Check the no, heck no, I'm gonna be so tired. Yeah, I debate on flying down to Fort Lauderdale. What the? <laughs> but right, yeah, so, they were from there. The people behind us were from Virginia. Uh, the guy next to me was from Tampa, but that's not that far. Uh, the guy sitting next to me was from Georgia. Hey, hey, guy from Georgia. Pooler or wherever you're from, Down Lone the Warrior. Pooler. Shout out to you. Comment on the video if you watch this. Say your name. You're cool. So Peter Yan, he fights winner of Rob Font against Marlon Vera. No, probably no, 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 the no, best no. choice. I already know who he's fighting. I know who he's fighting, bro. I know he's fighting. Main event, USC fight night. He's fighting uh, Sean O'Malley. Y'all want to murder Sean O'Malley? I'm all for it. We can derail that hype train real quick. He's fighting Sean O'Malley. USC <laughs> fight night somewhere. I don't know where. Wherever they could get, like, a, a as long as it's not in the apex. Oh, wait, wait. They're still going to do Apex Fight Nights, right? Yeah, they're still going to do Apex Fight Nights. Who do you think is getting O'Malley again? Peter Young. Yeah. <laughs> nah. Why not, not yet. Why not? They're going to build up. They're gonna, this is going to be a slow build up for. It's the same uh, thing as uh, Hamzat against Gilbert Burns. Mm. It's the same thing. It is the same thing, the same but one's thing. willing to fight ranked opponents. There we go. The other one is afraid of fighting ranked opponents. I mean, the man just wants to get paid, but I mean, you gotta do your work. Yeah, I don't see any way. Yeah, nah. I mean, he had to be breaking like uh, his. He he said he's gonna you know take the smaller fights, and as long as he's getting paid, what he's getting paid, 
There's no re- reason for him to jump into the top five, and right. that's going to number what two? Peter Young would be now. Peter Young will still be number one. You, okay. Oh my goodness. Uh, I would say you guys want to talk about this upcoming card a little bit, but um, I feel it'd be best if we just talk about the main event. Due to the fact of the big welterweight shift we're about to have, and it's a welterweight main event with number four and five fighting, mm-hmm. would you guys like to talk about that? You, you, Luke versus um, Malal Muhammad. I expect Luke to be violent and get the win. I think he's. I think he TKOs Malal. Malal is very durable, but. Luke is as violent as he is durable. Hey, Luke wins first round, like demolishing. He might be able to be like, hold up, man. You beat my brother. You fight me now. He might be Rocky and Gilbert Burns was Apollo in this whole like thing mm-hmm. with the Russian. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It could happen unless they match up Kobe, but you you never know. Kobe Kobe might need to get his like two fixed or something after the whole Masvidal incident. He might go. He might have like court appearances and whatnot. He has to do. So, Luke might be available if he wins. He maybe I'm I'm here for it. I thought Kobe Chamaya was gonna get set up though. I thought so too. <clears throat> but I mean, Kobe might have to go to court. You never know. <clears throat> he might his tooth might not be right. So if Kobe Chemaev, yeah, don't happen, then you think it's going to be Luke Chemaev? It only makes sense. Yeah, because Luke is going to be stuck, like literally. He's gonna, and you know he's not going to fight Gilbert. So he's either fighting Kobe or Chemaev. There's no if. It, well, we also don't know what's going on with the whole Kamaru and Leon Edwards situation. But we know that fight's well, supposed yeah. to be next. But you know Whenever Kamaru finishes his surgery and shit. But still, you know how the UFC operates, though. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's really like who you think. It's some, Well, not really. Sometimes you can guess it. Most of the time you can guess it, but sometimes they shake that up and they go with who they want. With they, like, you know, they, they have their own plan. They are their own marketing um, for this promotion, so they know, they know what is going to get the most dollars in the seats. I think they usually go with that. Whoever gets the most dollars in their pockets. Because, I mean, if you think about it from, like, a merit standpoint, it's hard to argue that Leon doesn't deserve a title shot, given his long win streak. But we've seen that be, be ignored before. And it be ignored specifically for, like, flavor of the night. Because like you sometimes, like, a guy will have that. You think they deserve to get a shot, but then somebody does something insane, and then the needle moves straight to that person, and then that's the person getting up getting booked. It's not the guy who you think deserves it based off the fact that he just compiled some wins in a row. Conor McGregor. <clears throat> oh yeah, he's you know when he comes back, he's fighting for a title in whoever's weight class he decides. They they, they, they find a, a fight they want. For him, he's getting it's gonna be a title fight. I'm pretty sure he's either fighting Oliveira at 85. I can see him fighting Volkanovski at 55. Sorry, sorry, yeah, 55. Maybe even Volkanovski at 45. I don't think he's gonna cut down. I don't think he's gonna do that ever again. I think if that matchup happens, it's gonna happen at 155. Since Volkanovski was talking about jumping up to 155, anyways. Oh, that'd be neat. He basically said if Holloway is ready to go. We'll we'll sign that one up next, but if he's not ready, then we're we're gonna talk 155, become a double champ. Mm. It'd be it'd be interesting to see him um some of the 55 matchups. Um, but back to the the point. I don't know. I don't know. Can it? Yeah. I don't know either. Who Luke? No, like um. Volkanovski uh, taking those any matchup with um, not Volkanovski, sorry, um, Connor coming back. 
I don't know if it would. Um, I know I know he would get a direct title shot, but I'm not sure even if he wouldn't take Usman. Oh no no I get what you're saying. I was referring to Connor being the guy that just like jumps in front of the queue in right. general because yeah. you remember Max Holloway he had to put together what ten fights nine fights how many fights in a row before he got an interim belt shot. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Off the chance that oh. DC got his back hurt. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All because Connor was the guy to do all that stuff. He just mm-hmm. leapfrogged mm-hmm. his way. I mean, th- at that point, 145 pound Connor was, he was killing it. Yes, he was. But you got these guys that put together these long streaks like Leon Edwards. They just don't get no respect. They deserve a title shot, but they don't get it. Boy, I'm pretty sure there's, there's probably somebody else right now. Tony Ferguson was somebody. Tony they Ferguson literally let Tony Ferguson fight till he was out of his prime before they gave him a interim title shot. I mean, he won it, but but still, yeah. They wait. They they let him go on such a long win streak in one of the toughest divisions. Period. That that kind of win streak should have gave you a title shot forever ago. Not only that, they stripped him of the interim belt. Only right. for him to fight for it again. That's all I got. Correct. Say. That's all I gotta say. So you know the UFC is very harsh with their choices. Mm-hmm. They're very blunt and forward. Like, look, mm-mm. we're gonna go with him. I have a um an interesting suggestion that we didn't even think about. We we heard the call out of TJ Dillashaw, but what what about Aldo versus Aljo? Um. Well, Dillashaw should be healed up by now since his uh knee surgery or leg surgery, yeah, or whatever yeah. it was. So I, I, I would be much more title shot. So it makes sense that he was front row. You know, it makes sense. What if we can yeah, beat? A, I, I, I would like to see a matchup of Peter Yan, TJ. And I would like to see Jose get a shot, a crack the title before. Again? But, yeah. Especially he against fought uh, Peter Jan for the, the mm-hmm. vacant belt. He did. Man. Well, he is on a, what, three-fight winning streak right now? Yeah, three-fight winning streak since he lost that uh, strap. Mm-hmm. He's so, looked good, no, I mean... Not- he dropped down to 135 and lost to Marlon Marais in some tomfoolery decision. But he went on oh, a little yeah. win streak. Then he fought Peter Yan and lost. He lost that fight to Peter Yan. Yes, he lost the fight to Peter Yan. But then after that, he's just been smoking people. Like he's been winning. Like, I'm showing you why I am the king of Rio. He ain't been putting them away, but he has been dominating them and showing them why he's that dude. So, right. I don't know. I don't know. Like, people say, like, you don't drop down and wait and do better. They usually say most fighters go up and wait. It, it depends. So, sometimes, sometimes you get their success. Um, it, it just, it just so varied on it's fighter to fighter, man. Sometimes it doesn't. It doesn't look good though. It usually is not a good. It's usually not a good sign when you see a person struggling at one weight class and then they go lower. It usually don't. Usually doesn't pan out, but sometimes it, it can. Um, speaking of panning out, uh, just saw news that a Brazilian cowboy parts ways with the UFC after twenty two fights. What? Ooh. They cut him, or did he? Did his contract run out? It's a good question. Um, I don't know the answer to that question. I, I just know that they. That was I just saw. You the, know, what um, fight would be kind of intriguing is Sanhagen against Aldo. Okay, so um, according to this article, he um, he's already on the last fight of his contract, and they opted not to re-sign him to a new deal. Okay, okay. Yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? The Cowboys, bro. We got Australian Cowboy. We got American Cowboy. We no, we no longer have a Brazilian Cowboy. 
Even though the no. Australian cowboy doesn't want we to call We barely him. have American. These cowboys, it's, it's time, man. It's time. You only last as long as you can, man. And Like you said earlier, the fight game gets rid of you. Yep. You don't gotta, you don't gotta worry. You don't gotta worry about it. It's time. Hmm. It's time. We always know he's game to fight. We know the fight's gonna be something good, and it is what it is. And I believe yeah. this is a Cowboys' last fight, isn't it? Against Joe Lozon coming up on this pay per view. Supposedly, it was supposed to be his last fight three fights ago too. Wait, now he's fighting somebody he should be fighting. Right, but just saying. Dana White has been quoted saying this will be his last fight, like, three fights ago. But they love Cowboy, so they let Cowboy kind of do his thing. And the fans love Cowboy, so Cowboy's still going to make them money. All right, so let's get back to that, uh, Hype train talk. And now, this guy has been quoted talking trash to Izzy, whoever, right? I'm referring to uh, Chemayev, a.k.a. Chims, as my wife likes to call him. <laughs> so, Mr. Chim. Chims, I don't see him beating Vittori. Definitely not Whitaker. He might have a shot at Paulo Costa because that dude's head's not in the game. I don't really see him splashing in the top five the way the hype train brought him to where he's at now. That's how I see it. What do you guys think? We're talking 185 now. 185. Izzy? Oh, bro. The only... I, nah. I see him getting slept by Izzy, honestly. Yeah, same. I feel like he. I, I think Izzy beats, beats him pretty easily. Um, yeah. I don't really. I don't really see him doing much in the um, eighty-five division at all. I think his. I think he's a contender at welterweight. I think he would do okay against all the fours. Against all the who? All the fours. Honestly, I think Darren Brunson might be able to get him. I I I mean competitively. I don't mean like he's gonna win any of those. Because if Paulo Costa can get his head back in the game, I think he smashes Jemaya. The only reason why we're questioning uh, Costa right now is because I don't know. He's making fucking vagina jokes with his armpit on his social media. That's what his days have come to. <laughs> That's uh Vitor Belfort's son, man. <clears throat> Whatever. Blood. Blood. Somehow that's his son, bro. <laughs> mm-hmm. He's Vitor's Somehow son, bro. Son. I don't. I don't know how. I mean, unless Vitor was getting it in at a very young age, I just don't know how, man. Yeah. Man, what's wrong with this dude, man? The, whatever wine he was drinking the night he fought, he fought uh, Izzy. The night before, please, can I have some? <laughs> Please. It has changed your life. I don't want a whole bottle. I just want a cup of it because the whole bottle obviously messes you up. But I just want a cup of whatever wine he drank before he fought Izzy because, man, that wine is some potent stuff. Strong. Because you know how we always link, like, some traumatic moment to an athlete's issues? Like, uh, they say Antonio Brown's issues was uh, the hit he took from the dude from the, what, Bengals? Was yeah. it the Bengals? Mm-hmm. Burfitt, right? That's how you say his name? Vontaze. Vontaze. Vontaze lit him up and changed his whole life. So whatever wine Paulo Costa was drinking, I want some of that. I want my you life changed. But I ain't drinking the whole bottle because I know what happens when you drink the whole bottle. I just need yeah, to be careful. Bottle. We've just seen it. Just a couple. Just cup. I ain't about to go shave my head bald and get hair implants and whatnot. And <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, I just want a cup. I just want to be in La La Land. Just a little taste? Yep, whatever it was. Because it's not grapes that they're crushing. 
in that wine. <clears throat> yeah, Paulo, um, that's gonna be that's gonna live oh, for a long time. Wait, 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 with Chemayev, Jerry Cannonier probably sleep him. I don't know how good his wrestling is though. It might be okay. That would be an interesting one. I don't see him doing good against Whitaker. Costa, if he doesn't drink the wine and he clears his head, I think Costa can knock his ass out. Sean Strickland would be an interesting fight. I think it would be an interesting fight. Same with Derek Brunson would be... I think... <clears throat> excuse me. The Derek Brunson fight might be a slower pace, but close to the same as Gilbert Burns was. Yeah. Um... Anyone outside of the top ten, the only person I think he has trouble with is Kelvin Gaslam. Gaslam, he's still got potential. Gaslam's got all kinds of potential. I mean, I think he looked good against Till Hall, Uriah Hall. Um, mm-hmm. I think he'd be okay against Jack Hermanson. Um, but other than that, I don't really see him doing much at 85. However... I think his best matchup's at 70. Because, I mean, mm-hmm. e- even though Gilbert did make him look, look a little bit human and not as much as uh, He's not the juggernaut. Machine. Yeah, he looked like a juggernaut he did in, the first, in the previous four fights. Um, I still think that his best fights, his best matchups are going to be at once 170 pounds. I think he'll do well against... Um, most of the like I top five, I think he'll do he'll I think he'll be okay against um Vicente, Leon Edwards. Um I'm, I'm I'm curious to see how he'll do against Kobe. I think Usman has the edge. And then we already saw him fight um Gilbert Burns. I would be I would be actually pretty interested to see him face off against a guy like Steven Thompson. I want to see him fight Sean Brady actually. Well the thing is, um that's well, I would, I would, that, would, that would be nice. I, I like, I like that too. Because they're both like, like that. new guys. But it's, I think he's getting. Time. It's time. I think he's for sure coming off a oh, win. But he's fighting definitely Kobe or right. winner of uh, Bilal and Vicente. For sure. Right. For I don't sure. think he would be going that deep down into the um, into the rankings right now. I think um, Brady's going to need to fight somebody. He'll probably fight loser of one of these fights that just that's happening. Within this yeah. man, like Muhammad or maybe um Gil. Well, I mean, I was about to say, where does we Gil know, go? We don't know if Muhammad lost yet. We're not in the future yet. I said maybe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I feel like it, he'll fight loser of either one of these two fights. Man, stop playing. You know, Bob Bilal getting beat, bro. Sure. If Bilal gets beat, then I say Gilbert Bilal happens. I okay. can see that. I can see that happening too. It, it makes the most sense, but I feel like Sean Brady's the the guy that's sitting on the outside because you know he's not going to fight Jorge. Jorge, mm-hmm. I don't know what's going on with him. And then you got Stephen Thompson still out there. Don't know what's going on with him either. He wants a, somebody. He wants somebody that's a stand up fighter. So someone that's going to you know stay, stand up and make a kickboxing fight. He's not really looking to get booked against another like wrestler. So. I, that's a bad, probably a bad idea. I'm not probably a bad um, prediction to say Hamza because I don't think he was signed that fight. Neil and Maggie be trying to get a fight with. He was just trying to sign up for a fight recently too. That would be good. Oh, Magni, yeah. Magni, and has Magni and is Wonder Boy fought yet at all? I want to say that one did happen already. I don't know. I feel like Magny's fought like the who's who of every divi- or the, his division because he's been around for so long, just fighting anyone. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, and Magny Wonder Boy wouldn't be a terrible matchup, or even Magny Sean Brady. I'd take it. Yeah, I don't want to like. I, I don't want to shut down the possibility of um, Hasmat. Going for champ champ status because it depends on who's there, but yeah, I definitely don't see him doing much. Um, after the after last this last performance, I don't think he's going to just run over um, 
the top five of welterweight, let alone um, anybody in middleweight. So we put that to rest. But I do think he's a contender. I think I left that fight for sure thinking that Hamza is a legit contender. Um, even though I thought he was being a little bit overhyped going in. Agreed. I, I thought he was overhyped. I thought they were pushing him too hard with this fight, to be honest. But I came out of this fight getting my questions answered. Is he a contender at 170? Definitely a contender at 170. Will he be champ? Don't think so. I I don't see him at this moment beating Usman. No. I, but I, the Kobe Covington the will answer that. I was on the train, but the conductor fed me enough stuff to make me get off the train. And I was glad the, the, the train stopped here today, yesterday, two days ago. I'm glad the train stopped. And I was like, thank God, this conductor, he don't know how to drive the train. So either way, I've, I feel also he's definitely top five guy. They pushed yeah. him all the way up to the, the spot that he deserves wherever he lands. But does he beat Kamaru? I don't see it. Not right now. Definitely not right now. Because right we're going to do some MMA math that makes no sense like usual. Gilbert Burns, yeah, he dropped uh, Usman. He stunned him a little bit. But he also got put away by a jab from the champion. Am I right? Mm-hmm. You're right. So what happens if he gets jabbed by the champion? Champion got cardio as well. That This fight ain't going to be three rounds. Mm-mm. Nope, 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 nope. Five rounds, baby. And I believe Kamaru Usman is currently the pound-for-pound pound guy. I don't care what the rankings say. Even if they don't say he's number one, he's pound-for-pound pound currently right now in my book. Yeah. I think they actually do have him as pound for pound number one, don't they? I hope they do. For the rankings? Let me check. It's been a while since I looked at those. Oh, wow. John Jones is number seven? Oh, my goodness. I mean, he hasn't fought in years. Yeah, well, you remember for the longest, he was either number one or number two. Yeah, oh. it was between him and Demetrius for a long time. I kind of like these rankings in a way. They got uh, Usman as one. Izzy is number Izzy two. two. Volk is number three. Like you know, I, I got, I got, I got, I got to throw some kind of shade on the dude, even though I respect him so much, because you know I like Holloway, but mm-hmm. he he deserves his spot as number three. Volkanovski, he deserves yeah. his spot, bro. He's he's good. He's really good. I don't know if I would have put Holloway under Oliveira and Francis, but. I wouldn't have put John Jones at seven either, even though he hasn't fought in like three fucking years. In my opinion, I think that's the only reason why he should dropped. only be active champions. That's how I feel. You got Poirier up there. Come on. I think that it should only be active champions, but the champions should be on there. We don't have 15 titles, so there's going to be other people on there. Well, once you get past the active champions, that's when you can have the um, the guys... That are like the one B's in their divisions. Because, I mean, the only reason why I argue against that is I think Whitaker's one B in uh, 185. And I think he can, I think he has, he's a better talent than a lot of the other champions in other divisions. You know who so. Aljamain's not on this list. Nope. He will be. He should. <laughs> you put him at fifty. He, he, I'm sure he'll he'll pop up somewhere in the bottom. I don't know if they'll put him in top ten, but they'll he'll, they'll put him at the bottom of this, and oh. Jan will drop. See, I made I made a fatal mistake. I was like pound for pound, but I didn't realize they did like men's and women's. I thought it was all condensed. Separate. In one. No, they're separate. I mean, they used to be condensed in one, but they do separate now. Should be condensed in one. The way things are going nowadays, but it's a different story. <laughs> I 
I have a problem with the women's pound for pound rankings, though. There's just. I feel like there's not enough. It's not a fair fight because there's not enough divisions. There's not enough competitors in that? Right. Like. I know there's technically three divisions, but there's really only two. So your your pound for pound rankings one through or champ yeah one through fifteen are going to be comprised of your a mixture of the top tens of two divisions. Like there's just no other way around it. It's not just three divisions. Kind of. We've got like Ish. three and like a quarter. Three uh, and the eighth. Uh, Oh, you're right. There's three divisions. I I, I apologize. It's like three There's and the three eighth. divisions. It's like three and the eighth. It's the fourth division that doesn't exist. That's why I say it's the eighth. You got an eighth. Yeah. You got an eighth. Of a There's division. only one person in that division. Officially in that division. <laughs> yes. And she's technically a 35 pounder too. She is. So. There's that. They haven't even updated her belt. But either way, the whole UFC 273 back in Jacksonville is beautiful. Kind of long. But if I could do it again, I absolutely would. We're going to go into the wooded area once again to tailgate. It's a good spot. Mm -hmm. It's a great spot. And hopefully they come back next year. Maybe this year, December. We might get lucky. Something. Mm Mm-hmm. The more, the, the faster, the better. And I, was dope. I strongly suggest if you live in the area, you should go to one at least. It's something else. It's definitely an experience. It's not the same I mean, thing as just chilling with your homies and watching it on the couch or something or going to a restaurant, bar, whatever, watching it. It's totally different. It's totally different. The You're, there. You're there. You're there. You're there. Yeah, and the vibe's completely crazy in there. For me, it's like hearing the strikes is uh, is insane. Like how loud it is. Those leg kicks sound like um, people hitting the getting a nice strike on a baseball bat. Like even when you hear the uh, what are they clapping? The wood claps for the ten seconds. The wood mark? clappers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, even hearing that is like different than hearing it on TV. Mm-hmm. You know? Plus the buzz. Plus the buzz of the crowd and the energy. Like in that stadium, it's just unmatched. You can't really get that. You get like a small percentage of it when you watch it at the house, but when you there, man, it's it's immersive. Like you can you can get it gets, you get wrapped up in it so much that you can't even t- pay attention to. Well, not pay attention. You can't. It's hard to tell which round it is. Like I had a hard time with that um, Volkanovski fight. I thought that it was on round five. Nah, bro. The way they had the round set up, they changed up the. Um... The user interface, that's the best way I could put it, from before. You know, before they would have the three lines on the bottom mm-hmm. or however, five lines for each round. Now they got a little gold box that says what round it is. Mm-hmm. So if you're mm-hmm. not looking for that particular, you're like, what round is this? And then you'll see like R2. And you're like, what? Oh, damn, I thought there was a third round already. It's, a, it's, solely, it's totally different. And also, shout out to the cameraman that was blocking our view. He deserves a raise. Whatever his his like assignment was, he achieved it. Cause I swear to God, that dude did not move from the whole fucking fight. Yeah, that dude was there. Like even when yeah. they went to commercial and the like the the ring had the it was like the lights went out and everything. That dude was there. Like, is he? Was he a statue? That man was <clears throat> he straight up in the way, mm-hmm. <laughs> bro. I don't know if the the fighters decided, hey man, let's let's fight right here in front of him so they can't see that. <laughs> I swear to you, man. That cameraman did his job. He's like, watch my feed. Fuck seeing it in person. You're right. <laughs> There's big screens everywhere. Watch those. And they had like a second delay to to begin with. That's why I'm like looking high low, high low, high low. <laughs> Each time. 
I always tend to look at the uh, screens when they're grappling so I can get a better view of like the hand fighting or whatever. But other than that, I was trying to watch the cage. I'm like, hello, hello, hello. Mm -hmm. Come on, kid, yeah, watch man. Get out of there. Yeah, watching the cage was just... Uh, I'm watching the, the fighters in the cage. Was just like, It's just, man. It takes... Watching it at home, it's like... It doesn't seem as real. Like, when you see it up close, it's just like a whole different thing. It's so much more crazy and so much more tense. And you just realize how much, like, when you're watching it on TV and you see them circling the outside of the cage and doing all this movement around the cage, you don't realize how much they're actually running around and moving around until you see that cage in person. Mm -hmm. That is a big area to circle constantly for five fucking rounds. <laughs> yes, sir, it is. It's... Well, on that note, I hope they come back to Jacksonville soon. And you guys ready to call it? Yes. Shout out to shout out to um all the listeners, viewers on YouTube. Appreciate you. Um, appreciate appreciate the support. Like, subscribe for more. And uh, hit us up in the comments. We'll hit you, we'll talk about it. We can give us some feedback. How about your boy, Ashley Knuckles? My dude from Georgia. Please say something, my dude from Georgia. You know who you are, Pooler or Cooler, whatever city it is, whatever weird ass town it was. <laughs> Holla at your boy. Yes, sir. On that note, though, zip it up. Zip it out. Zippity doo dah. Bye bye. <laughs>